Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purge Views. Pressure Cooker is a board game themed around working in a kitchen at a restaurant. You're going to be playing in real time, which I already know is going to make some of you, three-fourths of you, 90% of you run for the hills. But it seems like real-time games in the kitchen are something that's very popular and probably was done a little bit better in Kitchen Rush. I think that game is superior to this one. Now, when I saw Rio Grande on the box, I should have known what I was getting into. Subpar components, a game that kind of seems half-baked, and that's what you get here. It's easy to learn, but the components are so blasé, it's like you can't really get into it. But let's talk, let's put that aside, the components, I'll talk about that section. But for now, uh, you're flipping over tiles and adding them to your kitchen. Everything is being done in real time, so you have to be like really, really quick about it. And that really is the game. You're fulfilling orders. People are bringing in unique items that they want you to make. And you're fulfilling them as quickly as you possible, possibly can in a real-time atmosphere. There really isn't a whole lot more to this game than that. And the box is really big. Much bigger than it really needs to be. I feel like maybe it was shrunk down. It was looked at more like a filler game. I think this game would be accomplishing more of what it wants to be. But as a full-fledged board game, I just found the gameplay to be very, very lacking. Not a huge fan of real-time. I like the kitchen theme, I like the pressure coming from that, but whenever I would pull this off the shelf, I'd rather play Kitchen Rush, I think that was a death note to this game. Now, sometimes games can be so good, same theme, same mechanism, same everything, I'm happy to play both. Caverno Agricola is an example of that, you know, uh, Feast for Odin is an example of that. I like those games, I can play all of them and have a good time. Pressure Cooker didn't really live up, so I would never want to play... You know, this is like, this is the equivalent of like when you go and there's like a movie like Transformers, and then in Walmart you find the three dollar bin Trans Bots, but it looks just like Transformers, just to trick you. Now I'm not implying that Rio Grande did that. This game came out way before Kitchen MD or, or Kitchen Rush, but I really feel like I'd rather play that version of the game. Kind of the same theme. There's another one out uh, about making sushi where you're on the clock and trying to make that as quickly as possible. I like that one also. This is probably the least of the bunch and one I would not keep, and that'll be a purge for me. Here is Pressure Cooker from Rio Grande Games. I kind of like this picture here. I just don't like the art of it, which is funny because I like the composition. So we're going to set this aside. You're going to get a rule book, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. And you're going to see here, you're going to start out with some player areas. This is where you'll set down your kitchens, and you can see the different colors that are available. These will be the little markers that you'll utilize to show you're done with uh, things. They're very cheap. I've upgraded mine. These will be the player boards that you have. Now, these right here don't work really well. You can see they, they're very loose, and they were put together for us. So that's one of the biggest problems with components. Very cool how they are, but they don't work very well. You're going to get a bunch of these tiles. It's very generic looking. The artwork isn't great on them. Very old looking, and they're from a different time period, I suppose. Everybody get one of these player boards, the different ingredients that you can have on it. I think this works really, really well. You're going to have your sand timer, which you might want to uh, maybe use it because you just flip it over when you're done, or you can use uh, something on your phone. Then you're going to have a bunch of cards here that will have the orders on them. I mean, all the icons are pretty clear about how you want to use, and the numbers are good. It just looks dated, but I assure you, it didn't look great when it came out either. But those are the components that you're going to see. No kind of insert in here. Everything just kind of gets killed in here. Uh, very bland pictures, very bland colorization. You know, the coolest factor was the scoring. It doesn't even work. So the components are a big miss for me. Here is the rule book. You can see it has a different picture on the cover, which is appreciated. I always appreciate that. You're going to get a picture of the components all listed out. It's fantastic. Uh, plenty of pictures and examples as you go through. The rule book is probably one of the higher points of the game here. Uh, you can see examples through here with pictures. It tells you exactly how to score and what you need to go through and the quality bonuses, etc. There's a little bit of a tip up here for younger players if you want to play with them. It's one of those big square rule books. I think it works fine, and this is a thumbs up for me for the rule book. So I'm going to give a quick overview of the game. So this will be out here, and I'll say one, two, three, and then orders will come out here. And there's different colors of these that will be out. So you have the four colors, and these will all get kind of orders on them. And this is what you're trying to fulfill as the game goes on. Now on the player board, you're going to have red, yellow, green, blue, which will correspond to these. I'm only showcasing two of those. So if you want to do the yellow that's on one, you will build it here. If you want to do the yellow that's on two, you will build it there. So each of these orders are going to be fulfilled 
by taking the tiles that are available. So these tiles are all going to be out. Just for example, they're all going to be face down. On your turn, real time, so you have these tiles that will be out, and there'll be tons of these uh, that are in that are in the game. On your turn, you're going to take one, you're going to flip it over and look at it. Now, if you wanted to put it inside one of these orders, let's see, none of these orders require meat, so I, let's just say I'm playing off this, I don't want that, I put it back in the pile, but I'd put it face up. And I could grab one that's face up, if somebody else has put one down. Let's see, I needed bacon, I didn't need bacon after all, did I? So I take something and it says cheese, enchilada, so maybe I put that here in the third one, and when I have three of these done, then I, the round may end based on number of players, sometimes it's four, sometimes it's five, and everybody will have one minute, they'll flip over the sand timer, and then their time will start, and I'll have one minute to try to fulfill orders. That's what you're trying to do. So in this order, I want chicken, bread, cheese, and tomatoes as quickly as possible. And hey, remember, I'm doing this, or I'm taking something that is face up. Now, there are a few other tiles like uh, wine that can be in any space. This gives you a little bit of a bonus. There are dessert tiles here that you can use, but they always have to be last because everybody eats the dessert last. So after you complete a number of orders, you'll score here. It was first is seven, three, one. You just need to verify they have the ingredients. And then if you get over this amount, you'll be able to score additional points. Now there are some here that says like salad and it just says one head of lettuce and then five. So you would look here on your order thing and it'll tell you for salad, I can have any of these ingredients. So for this one, I can have any five ingredients that are on this page. That's kind of how it is. So everything is happening in real time. The game is that simple. There's not a whole lot to it. Uh, whoever scores the most points is the winner of the game. Who should buy this game? This is strictly for fans of real time. I think you're really gonna have to like real time to enjoy this game. It reminds me of like a younger brother of Galaxy Trucker a little bit. You're rushing to, to do things and the whole point of the game is to do them ineffectively or inefficiently. And by doing that, you get a laugh out of it, but time is not on your side. So you have to go really quickly. And that's really the game. If that kind of tension, if that kind of stress feels like fun to you, then this game is going to speak to you. Otherwise, there are other games I'd recommend in this genre before I would do this one. The components also, I think, bring the game and the look of the game down quite a bit. Purge for me.